To our guests again today, North Texas Republican Congressman Dr. Michael Burgess, and joining the questioning, Grummer Jeffers, political writer with the Dallas Morning News. Dr. Burgess, thanks for joining us again. As always, great to be here with you guys. Certainly. Thank you for your time. Well, President Obama Friday, as we know, issued this executive order that gives immunity uh, from deportation to certain illegal immigrants younger than 30 and who entered the country younger than uh, 16 and who aren't criminals. Uh, so what's the Republican response? Well, you know, of course, this is information that has just arrived, and the information that I've received is somewhat different from the administration, uh, the information the administration is putting out. So there's a lot yet to be sifted through on this executive order. I think it's a bad idea to do this by executive order, and, and not just because I'm a member of the legislative branch, but we do have three branches of government for a very good reason. And uh, I mean, your, your, your lead in, uh, using the term, someone who's in the country without the benefit of the legalities, does that mean that they are in fact uh, uh, guilty of a crime and if you're going to say well this crime doesn't matter is this then some form of amnesty that is being provided by the White House and if so can they actually even constitutionally do that I do, I do want to thank the president he has uh, driven an enormous amount of phone traffic to my office and uh, my staff is busily trying to to get all those calls answered but there are a lot of people out there with a lot of questions and, and the, the initial reaction from the constituents in North Texas is uh, they're they're generally not pleased by this activity well, well dr. Burgess you hear a lot from Republican candidates, even our, even our Senate candidates here in Texas, about border security, tripling the number of border security agents. What you don't hear, though, is a plan for the 11 million or so illegal immigrants in the, in the country, what to do with them. What is the Republican plan? Well, I would, first off, uh, Gromer, uh, I would point out that this does not seem like a plan to me either. This seems like a plan from growing that 11 million to perhaps 12 or 13 or 14 million. One of the issues has been with the downturn in the economy, the, the pressure from the jobs magnet right. that was so intense in 2005 and 2006 has been, has been dialed back. So why in the world would the president want to then say, hey, let's turn on this magnet again and, and do it from this standpoint, I, I got to believe there's going to be a growth industry of people who are now getting to the border as quickly as they can and find some way over here. And there will also be a growth industry for providing the documentation that people will need to present to the Customs and uh, Immigration Services. Those federal agencies, by the way, are not equipped to handle this. And I don't care what the president says that in 60 days or 30 days, he's going to have that up and running. There is no way in the world those dysfunctional federal agencies can handle the load that is fixing to come their way. Would you support a guest worker program. I know that the Texas uh, State Party, Republican Party in Texas, in their, in their platform, a remarkable platform considering where they've been in the past, uh, supports a guest worker program. Well, some my sort of my position has been, let us use this opportunity that exists with the pressure somewhat off of the the influx of, of people coming to the Mexico without, from Mexico without the benefit of citizenship. Let us use this opportunity to improve those things that need to be improved, and border security is certainly at the top of that list. Um, again, I don't see that this is a move to, to accomplish that goal, and if anything, this may be a, 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 a move to further complicate things. Now it's interesting, there's my understanding that this tracks very similarly with some proposals that uh, Senator Rubio, Marco Rubio had put forward. I don't know if this a, a defensive move to, to sort of deflect a, perhaps a future vice presidential candidate who may be on the ticket opposing the administration. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to have those answers, but I do know this. Enormous confusion now is likely to descend upon this area because of this executive order. Let's pivot now to the health care law. What's your um how do you think that the Supreme Court's going to rule in the health care law? If it strikes down the mandate, what's the, uh, uh, what will House Republicans pursue? Well, I, I have to tell you, I mean, we do hear a lot of stories about you can't strike down the law because there are some groups that will be harmed. And the three things you hear talked about most are kids on insurance policies up to age 26, uh, coverage gap of the so-called donut hole in Medicare Part D, and people with pre-existing conditions. Let me just quickly go through each of those because they are important. Kids on their insurance, parents' insurance up to age 26, that's a contractual arrangement that will continue for the remainder of the plan year so nothing changes July 1st if the Supreme Court voids the entirety of the Affordable Care Act. Those kids are still covered and in fact 
my discussions with insurance companies over the past several weeks has been they are looking at this as perhaps a way to, to gather market share because it is a popular notion and you had two and a half insurance companies come up this week and say we are looking at a, at a fundamental change in the way we write our policies and this, this may be included in the future. The coverage gap, interestingly enough, there were secret deals cut down at the White House. My committee has done a lot to expose those and the biggest secret deal was pharma for a price tag of $80 billion purchased protection from a reimportation plank in the Affordable Care Act and the purpose of that was from the administration standpoint use this $80 billion to close the so-called donut hole. As far as I'm concerned, the deal's a deal. They inked that in July of 2009 down at the White House, was not part of the legislative process, was not part of the Affordable Care Act. That one stays un unperturbed if the entirety of Obamacare is, is t turned away. Pre-existing conditions, the people who are in that federal program that was set up under the Affordable Care Act, there need to be some care and attention given to that. I think we can help those individuals if that program goes away, be transitioned into state programs, the risk pools and reinsurance that states already have, and that's something I'm prepared to do, and I'll be introducing legislation to do just that.